G'day, you bloody dickheads. The Vaping Fucking Bogan back once again for another Dinky Die review. Hope you're all having a stellar fucking day. Got ourselves another 2700 tube mod. This is the Blood Axe from Addison Innovations. Have a look at this fucker. Beautiful copper, fully mechanical tube. Uh, sitting atop it, I have the Sub Ohm Innovation Sub Zero X RDA, and this is a drip tip from Half Moon Mods. Anyway, let's have a fucking vape, shall we? Uh, now, the coils that I've got in here, uh, they're not from a coil builder as such, I don't think. Some cunt called Lee uh, sent me some coils. I don't know whether he's actually selling them as yet, but anyway, they are like um, fused, staple, staggered, crazy shit. Um, anyway, let's have a fucking vape, shall we? They're coming in at about 0.12, I think, ohm, somewhere around about that. Anyway. <laughs> this mod hits fucking hard. This absolutely knocks your socks off. One of the hardest hitting tube mods that has come across my hands inside the last six months, I reckon. It is a powerful fucking tube. Some low, low fucking voltage drop going on here. Anyway, dickheads, before we get into any more of this, let's talk fucking... Advocacy and beer dickheads, uh, as you know, governments, organizations, big tobacco, big pharma, they're trying to fuck us over. They're trying to fuck the smokers over who haven't found vaping yet. So go to the information in the description about advocacy. Do your fucking part. Fight for your rights. And most importantly, at the moment, I think, for the Canadians, there is a flavor ban bill being proposed. They need your help. So go, there's a petition down there and some other shit. Do your fucking part. Help out your fellow vapors and let's have a beer. So... We're gonna visit San Diego, California. This is an Ale Smith Orange X. There we go, Orange X from Ale Smith. Uh, it is an extra pale ale brewed with orange peel and natural flavor. There you go, coming in at 5.2%. Um, they combine crisp, light balance, and generous hop profile of an extra pale ale um, with bright, juicy citrus characters of orange. Uh, as a tasting room exclusive, yeah, anyway, let's fucking see how she tastes, eh? What the fuck is this cunt doing? Oh, and those little gnats flying around. Get the fuck out of here, cunt, where'd you come from? Anyway, dear kids, there you go. Got a very sort of bubbly complexion to it, not a lot of head, but as you can see, very effervescent. It's a little bit sort of murky, a little bit pale for an ale, as you'd fucking expect. She smells like oranges, cunts. That's what she smells like. She smells like that orange sort of peel, citrusy kind of uh, aroma. Anyway, let's see how she tastes. Oh, yeah, that is orange. That is fucking straight up oranges. It's quite light and thin, though. Um, some of the pale ales, you know, a little bit more murky, a little bit more sediment, feel a little bit more sort of um, heavy in the mouth. This feels very light and very thin and refreshing. Great hot weather fucking beer. And the orange is just right. It's not overpowering, but it's definitely there and very noticeable. Yeah, it gives it a little, little bit of a sourness, a little bit of a tang to it. Really, really nice, refreshing, clean and crisp. Not overly hoppy, but just a little bit in the background there. And very light on the malts. Yeah, very easy drinking. Uh, and then that, that orange at the end. Anyway, uh, let's pair up with a fucking uh, juice. What do we got here? This is from um, Alternative again. The Alternative line from Marina Vape. And this is the flavor called Beta. Uh, now this is, um, again, Nick Salt's e-juice. So it's got the nicotine salts in there. I've been really quite liking this nicotine salt stuff. It's first juice line I've had with it. Super smooth. What is the flavor profile though of this one? Um, it's apples and what is it? Apples and apples and peaches. Um, I get confused because it smells very apple-y when you smell it. And I was like, oh, it's a very green apple kind of smell. And then I vaped it and the peach with the apple somehow is making this taste very melony. I get a lot of like um, cantaloupe, not cantaloupe, is it cantaloupe? Yeah, the, the green melon, um, not the not the rock melon, but the um, 
honeydew. That's the fucking word I'm looking for. Reminds me a lot of some honeydew flavors that I've had in the past with just a little bit of apple in there and I definitely get some of the peach, but it doesn't say anything about fucking um, uh, melons in the flavor profiles, but I get definitely a lot of fucking melon. Yeah, quite a bit of melon in there, green apple and peach, really fucking nice. And just a titch, just a titch of menthol. Absolutely minimal though, very little menthol. If you don't like lots of menthol, then you know, you won't be worried about this, it's not too much. Oh yeah. Well that goes fucking awesome. Yes. Yes. Yes, dickheads! Um, really, really nice blend there. The, um, the peaches and the melon going with the orange just works really fucking well. And the beer's very, you know, you can taste the orange there. It's, it's prominent enough. Mixing with the fucking, um, juice, it's, uh, it's a delightful fucking flavour. Mmm. So it's sort of a candy flavour, these juices as well. Should have said that before, a bit of a candy kind of feel. Anyway, dickheads, enough fucking chit-chat. Let's get down to the up and bloody close. Let's break down... The, uh, the blood axe, and then we'll give you the pros, cons, price, and everything fucking else at the end. All fucking right again. So this is the packaging I got from Addison Innovations. The 40 is the serial number. Uh, this is a neat little box. I've seen one or two other mods on other reviews come in packages like this. I haven't received one, but I like it. It's kind of industrial. It's a little bit biohazard. What's inside here? Oh, 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 there we go. You got a little of that corrugated foam. This would be a handy little case to use on your travels. Nothing else in there. Uh, I don't think there was an authenticity card. If there was, I have fucking lost it, so um, apologies. But I don't think there was an authenticity card in there. But anyway, here we go, dickhead. So this is the Blood Axe, and I have the copper version here. It also comes in brass. Now, uh, I've decided to let this one patina. It is a brushed finish, which actually looks really quite nice when it gets a bit of a patina going. So I thought, fuck it, we often polish them up. Um, before a review, I'm gonna do a neat little uh, patina on this one. And uh, as you can see up the top there with that uh, 510 plate, that's the, the copper once I, uh, I cleaned it up. So I did give this a good polish before um, using it, just to start it off afresh. So we'll have a look at that. We've got a little um, AIV. There you go. Addison's Innovation Vape or Vaping, whatever. Um, and a nice little engraving. That's a that's a nice little touch there. A couple of prongs in case you need to get it out. And it is a hybrid connection dickhead. So make sure you have protruding pins from your atomizers. Okay, make sure your 510 is protruding from the threaded section. But anyway, let's make our way around this uh, beautiful little fucking tube. So we've got more venting up the top here. Um, a bunch of fucking holes. How many holes are up the top there? Eight vent holes. So you're going to have plenty of safety there if your battery was to start uh, to go cactus. You've got these nice deep cutouts in here. These are these are lovely. And it is uh, 28 millimeters at its widest point. Okay, tapering to 25 up the top here. Let's see what this middle section tapers to. Looks like the middle section also tapers to 25 millimeters. All right, dickhead. So you've got 25 up the top and 25 in the middle, 28 on the widest point there. You've got a serial number down the bottom here, as you can see I've got some nice green patina going in there, number 40 on this one, and on the other side you've got Blood Axe. And I really like this engraving, really nice and deep, such a classic bit of text there, really nice and deep, so it gets that lovely green patina that copper gets. Onto the switch, now the switch is Absolutely fucking delightful to use. It's got this concave button, and I think overall the whole mod very much um, has a bit of an Oros kind of feel. If, if my fucking old school mech heads remember the Oros um, mechanical tube mod, this has got a very similar sort of shape to it. Bunch of different engravings and um, cutouts in its own style, but it's got this concave button down uh, down the bottom here, which is just it just your fingers just they want to go in there. They just want to sink in there. All right, so let's uh, let's open her up. Take off the hybrid top cap. That just unscrews. Beautiful, lovely, lovely stuff. Now down in here is the contact. You probably can't really see it on camera, and you can see those two little holes next to the contact. That's how we're going to get the switch out. You can't take the switch out by spinning it. You can 
You can spin that all you fucking like and it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna undo itself. So you will need some tweezers or something like that. I would suggest tweezers. Get down in there. You just get to your uh, little holes, slot your little uh, tweezers into those little holes in there. You won't be able to see them, but put your finger on the, uh, the button, push in to hold it steady and then uh, start twisting. There we go. And I can feel it unscrewing. So there we go, this is this stainless steel sort of uh, plate that's sitting basically around your contact. Okay, so your contact pushes basically through here. Well, there it is there. Oh, there's the magnet, so out she comes. That's the inside of the base. Very, very nicely machined. There's a black Delrin piece down in there. You won't be able to see it, but that black ring, that's where your, um, your battery sits, sits on top of that. Um, I wonder if I can get him out for you. So your battery sits basically on top of this Delrin piece here. Okay, sits in there. There's an O-ring, basically just keeps him down in the bottom of the tube. And then you've got your contact pin and your two magnets. Um, that, that's not the way we want them to go. Let's see if I can show you. They're very, very fucking strong magnets, I have to say. Big fucking beefers. So there you go, that's your, that's your switch action. All right, you got the two big magnets there. I'm just gonna take him back off and put him to one side. Uh, you got your, your contact, which basically threads in. Like so, that stops the magnet from flying out. And uh, as, you, as you push, basically, this little fucker goes in and out. Yeah, so that's how the switch works. It's um, you know a design that has been done, um, you know, in different sort of configurations, similar ways. Uh, I haven't seen a mod exactly like this before, so uh, yeah, a nice switch. There's your contact. Okay, so that's what your battery's making contact with, basically a sort of rounded um, nib and a point. Um, I guess the idea behind this is to sort of prevent arcing um, on your mod is to have a, uh, a sort of somewhat of a point. Um, it's not a sharp point though, so there's still quite a bit of sort of flatness here that's making contact with your battery that's going to give you good voltage drop. And this mod does hit fucking hard. So this mod, this switch system is definitely not uh, lacking in voltage transfer. But as you can see from that copper contact, there's not really any arcing. There's, there's virtually no arcing marks on here at all. And I've been using this with 0.1 ohm builds for the last sort of 10 day or maybe longer, two weeks. Easily two, two weeks I've been using this and no arc marks whatsoever. Um, so yeah, something to be said about that switch design. It definitely works well. It's very smooth and uh, yeah, no arcing. So I'm gonna put this fucker back together. Voila. All put back together, let's chuck a uh, atomizer on here, show you what she looks like, um, and how basically you adjust your battery rattle. And that's probably one thing I should have showed you before, was um, basically the battery rattle and how it's adjusted for is this top cap sinks down into this tube. So you put your uh, put your battery in there. I've got an EFest 2700 in here. Uh, there you go, there you go. Um, same as the iJoys and the same as the Amp Kings, okay? Positive end up, because that's where the venting is. And basically you screw down your top cap until it's tight. Now, I've got a reasonably long 510 on this atomizer. This is the Sub Ohm Innovations Sub Zero Addy. Um, it's a 25 millimeter Addy. And basically, as you're um, taking, as you're screwing it in, it's taking up the battery slack and you can actually screw your 510 plate sort of further down into the tube. Sort of similar to, um, uh, what was it, the was it the Arc? I think it was the Arc mod um, a while ago that had a similar thing where you basically you adjusted for battery wrap. It's almost like a battery rattle. It's almost like a telescopic design like we've seen on very early mechanical mods. But instead of the tube sort of coming together in a telescope, it's actually the hybrid plate that goes down a little bit into the top of the mod. So you can't run anything wider than 25 millimeters on top here because you're going to hit the edge of the tube. 25 millimeters and smaller will obviously telescope down into the side of the tube. It's a little bit more obvious when you've got a shorter 510 pin because the Addy can go down further into the tube. Now one thing I will point out is it's just 
comes just set up for 2700 batteries. So you don't have any adapters. There's nothing in here that it comes with it that allows you to run an 18650. But if you did want to run an 18650, uh, I grabbed the Wismec um, little shell here. This is from their Machina um, 2700 tube mod designed to, to go and uh, put an 18650 battery in there. And then you can drop that into the tube. And I did find that it worked just perfectly. Um, so if you don't want to run a 2700 battery, but you really like this mod, you can get you know an adapter from elsewhere and uh, drop it in there. But yeah, as you can see, dickheads, basically you snug up your battery by screwing this down. And you can see it, it's actually gone a little bit into the top of the mod. So that's how you adjust for battery rattle. Once you, uh, once you do that, literally no battery rattle. It's great. Solid as fuck. Beautiful. Anyway, dickheads, uh, let's jump back up top. Let's give you the pros, the cons, the price, and everything fucking else. So there you bloody go, dickheads. Bit of a squiz at the blood axe. And as you can see, fuck me, it is a nice bloody tube. Um, it's got the ergonomic feel. It's got that nice curvy kind of shape. It's got a concave button that your finger just wants to sit in. Um, and she looks nice. But most importantly, she hits like a fucking truck, cunts. More power than you misses, mate. Tell you what, absolutely fucking hard hitter. Um, I don't have a, a setup to test these because I don't feel that you know there's something I could put together that would be accurate enough across the um, the board to give you a, a, a real voltage drop. But compared to you know other tubes that I've got, other copper tubes that I've got, other brass tubes that I've got, this is it's a fucking hard hitter. It it, it punches. Really, really good performance. Um, yeah, awesome. Awesome shit. Let's talk pros and cons though, dickheads. What do I like or what do I dislike? Well, I've already said how I like the button. Um, really, really nice. I love concave buttons. When it's got that little cutout, that little divot in there, your finger just wants to nestle in there, just wants to sit in there. It also means that you don't really hit the button from the side. Um, not that I've had a single misfire on here, not that I've had a crunch or any kind of nastiness, but I feel like if you've got a concave button, your finger kind of naturally sits in the middle of the button. So it's just gonna mean easier um, you know, movement, easier fucking um, transfer of, of voltage as you push that button, you know, you're not you're not going to accidentally hit it on the side because it just feels comfortable to hit it in the middle. I really like the simple switch design. Very easy to take apart, you know, clean in there. I didn't have any arcing um, on, on the contact. So, you know, I run 0.1 ohm builds most of the time in my tubes. And usually I get a few arc marks on the uh, on the battery um, or on the uh, on the contact. And I've been using this solidly for the last two weeks. I haven't touched or cleaned that contact. And I haven't really got any arc marks on there. So it seems to be preventing um, some arcing, which is great but also not inhibiting its fucking performance or the, or the transfer of voltage. I like this curve. For me, that's a pro. It just sits nicely in your hand. It, it just nestles into the, uh, the space between your thumb and your pointer. So that for me is a nice pro. The deep cutouts and engravings, really nice little touch there. Um, the blood axe riding down the bottom. You know, it's not overly covered in shit. It's just nice, clean, simple lines. Lots of venting up the top. Uh, so really, really uh, good to see a bit of safety there. Hybrid connection. Um, smooth button, as I said, that the feel of the button where it, where your finger sits is great, but it's also a very smooth throw. It's somewhere in the medium length. It's not long. It's not short. It's just you know a, a, a medium throw. So hopefully keep most people happy. Um, yeah. What else can I tell you? What else can I tell you? Fucking didn't really show you the size comparison. How does it shape up against a few other 2700 mods in its size? It's a big bitch. Um, if you compare it to the, uh, well, hang on, this hasn't been expanded, so that's how it's going to sit with a battery in there. It's still a bit taller than um, the Vapors Cloud uh, 1111 mods and the XX and things like that. So it's uh, let's let's jump into the cons. It is a big mod that could be a little bit of a con for people. Fairly sizable, 
bit of a fucking beefer, but it is a 2700 battery device, so that's got to be kind of expected. Um, not much else that I didn't like about this device. The only other thing would be that they didn't include a sleeve for 18650s. I don't care for it. I would buy this mod for the fact that it is a 2700 battery um, device. Excellent for mech mods because you've got those iJoys and those EFests and those Amp Kings that are all the same battery, just a different fucking wrap if you didn't know. Okay, so the purple EFest 30 amp, 3000 ma, the Amp King 30 ma, 3000. <laughs> 3000 mAh 30 amp, and the uh, iJoy 3000 mAh 30 amp. They're all the same fucking battery, just with a different wrap on them. Um, excellent for mech mod use because of the high amperage and the high uh, milliamp hours. So I don't care much for an adapter, but it's a tiny little thing you could have thrown in there that would have meant that, you know, say all your 2700s were, were depleted, you could use an 18. Some people might want that. Um, other than that, the only other little thing that, um, you know, can be an issue is if you've got a long 510 pin, you can end up, and you can't really see it on mine very well. There's not much of it. There's a tiny little gap between the top of the mod and the Addy. It's not even really noticeable to be honest, but it's, you know, half a millimeter. It's only an issue with the Sub-Zero X um, atomizer from from what I've tested. I chucked my goon on there. I chucked um, my Bonzer RDA on there. I chucked my Kennedys on there. Chucked um, some Filipino stuff. My illustrious. I chucked a bunch of shit on here, and none of them um, had a gap. It's just a Sub Zero X. So long five ten pins can give you a little bit of a gap because of the, the nature of the the battery um, adjustment. Is that you're screwing down into the tube. All of my Addies have either met perfectly at the top of the the, um, the mod, or they've kind of sunk a little um, half mil or mil into the actual tube, which is fine, which is the way it's designed. But if you've got a really long 510 pin, you might end up with a tiny gap there. Other than that, there's nothing really else to complain about here. It is a fucking cunt puncher. So performance is, is a big fucking pro as well. Right. Price dickheads, what is it going to fucking set you back? Well, this one was passed on to me directly from Addison Innovation, so fucking cheers for passing it on for the purposes of review. No, it doesn't change my opinion. I give it to you straight, cunts. These are selling for a really, really good price of just £73, um, which is about 120 Australian, and about 92 US. Um, really, really good. I have actually seen it on, uh, it's on the Addison website for $72.99, but they actually have it on a, a couple of other websites in the UK for as little as £65, and I might have even seen one place selling it for £58, which, which is really fucking good. For a mod that is built as well as this, with as good performance as this, um, I don't think you can really complain about the price at 100 uh, you know, that's £72. That's ridiculous. Very, very good performance. So, having said all of that, dickheads, um, I will put some links in the description to uh, uh, Addison uh, Innovations if you want to pick up one of these cunts. I'll throw a few other links into a few other websites. Grey uh, Evolution Vaping has it. So, if you want to pick it up from your favourite online retailer, you can do so. Otherwise, go direct to the source. Unfortunately, I haven't seen anyone selling them in the US or in Australia, so you're going to have to ship it across the uh, across the seas. But... At, a, at the price that it uh, that it is, I don't think you can really complain about having to uh, having to buy international. Um, yeah, very very good value, and a nice, very comfortable, very well performing fucking tube. So I think that wraps it up, dickheads. Um, I'll put the usual links to my Instagram and Facebook if you want to check out what I'm doing outside of the YouTube videos. I'll also include my usual links to the support areas. I am 100% independent. I don't receive funding. I don't receive sponsorships or affiliate links or any of that bullshit monetary influence from vape companies. We keep it 100% independent and unbiased for you, the viewers. Um, but to keep doing that, we need public support. So the Patreon link's there. Pledge a few bucks each month. There's prizes. There's giveaways for those that support. And there's also content that you won't fucking see here. But if you can't do that, cunts, don't worry about it. That's all good. No skin off my nose. I'll still be here doing my thing. sub my fucking dick off. sub my fucking tits off. Well, that's what you ladies should be doing. Um, but above all, staying off the fucking stinkies, cunts. That's what it's all about. Doesn't matter whether it's a copper 2700 tube or just your basic box. As long as you're not on those fucking bungers. That's what we're all about. You cunts, have a bloody good one. Cheers for tuning in and cheerio.
Back once again for another Dinky Die review. Hope you're all doing doing what? We should think about these things before we fucking start them.